Let's talk about snow. Let's take a look at snow. Snow, of course, is throughout the Sierra Mountains. It's one of our great forms of recreation in the Sierras. It's also the source of our water supply. Not only the water that we use for drinking, but also the water that we use for almost every aspect of life in the basin parts of the Great Basin and the Basin and Range Province. Here are a few questions. What is snow water equivalent? What are some of the determinants of snow density, which is related to snow water equivalent? And why is snow important in Nevada? Well, worldwide, snow accounts for a minor portion of, the, portion of the available water. It's water that's available in the solid phase, which is very important when we talk about glaciers, but it's not very important when we talk about natural precipitation that occurs throughout most of the world. However, in certain regions, for example, Nevada, uh, in the alpine areas, it accounts for 90 plus percent of the local water supply. That means that it's very, very important in, in certain areas while not so important in others. And the estimate of the amount of water available in the snowpack, which is called the snow water equivalent, is a very important aspect of hydrology and ecohydrology. We know that snow is a form of precipitation, but one of the things that makes it unique and difficult to work with in some ways in, involves the uh, response time from when it accumulates and when it produces runoff and groundwater recharge. This is why we need a long time step in water balance analyses that include systems that have significant accumulations of snow. When water is finally released from the snowpack, it's very at a much different time than when it actually accumulates during a storm. And snow then has a very complicated connection to other hydrologic processes, including evaporation and transpiration and infiltration into the soil. Well, some of the characteristics that are very important in terms of snow include the snow water equivalent, which is simply the amount of water available in a snowpack. And as with precipitation and evapotranspiration, the way that we characterize snow water equivalent is in inches or me measurements of length or units of length. And the reason that we do that again is that we're assuming that snow water equivalent has the same significance and characteristics, for example, as precipitation received at the landscape. This is usually derived from two measurements. They include the density of a snow core and the depth. So snow water equivalent is equal to the density of the snow core times the density or times the depth of the snow core. And if you carry out the unit analysis of this, depth is in usually in meters and density is in kilograms per meter cubed. The result is in kilograms per meter squared, which is the equivalent of millimeters. Again, a linear dimension. Some of the primary uh, snowpack characteristics uh, from which SWE is derived, or snow water equivalent is derived, include again depth and density, which are in turn related to the hardness of the grains and the hardness of the snowpack, the temperature, the numbers of the uh, proportion of impurities that are included in the snowpack, the degree to which the snow either absorbs or reflects solar energy, again that's called the albedo, and those in turn are related to the strength the grain shape, the grain size, and the liquid water content of the snowpack. So those on the right are more micro physical characteristics. Now, all of these together lead to the determination of snow water equivalents in a snowpack. Snow water equivalent itself, the old rule of thumb when James Church began his work was that 10 inches of snow was equal to one inch of water. And as you'll see in a moment, that's an estimate that can be far from correct depending on the characteristics of the snowpack. The density of snow is very different than liquid water because the crystalline water, snow and ice, 
is interspersed with air, which generally means that the density of snowpack is significantly less than that of liquid water and ice. And as an example, the density of new snow, fresh snow, powder, can be as little as 50 kilograms per cubic meter, when the air temperature is at about negative 10 degrees centigrade, to up to 200 kilograms per cubic meter, when the air temperature is around freezing. But the diversity of densities doesn't stop there. That's simply a range. When we look at different kinds of snow, for example, wild snow or fresh snow, we see that we need anywhere between 98 and 33 inches of, of wild and fresh snow to produce, uh, between, to produce one inch of water. When we have ordinary new snow that's immediately after falling in still air, we need between 20 and 15 inches of snow to produce one inch of water. Settling snow then becomes more dense. We only need 14 to 11 inches to produce one inch of water. Average uh, wind toughened snow, there we have a density that's significant, or a, a snow depth that's needed to produce one water that's significantly less than the rule of thumb, which is remember was 10 inches of snow equals one inch of water. A wind hearted slab is also very dense and contains much more water per inch of snow pack than wild snow or ordinary snow or settling snow. And when we talk about the fern snows, then we, can become, we reach the points where our densities are much higher than in any of the snows that I just discussed, coming closer to uh, between one and two inches of snow needed to produce one inch of water. So back to our questions. What's snow water equivalent? It's the amount of water that we would obtain by melting a column of snow. Uh, the snow water equivalent is usually very much less than the depth of the snow column that it comes from. Again, the old rule of thumb was that one inch of water could be gained from 10 inches of snow. But as I showed you in the previous table, this can vary significantly depending on the type of snow and the length of time that it's been in place. Some of the determinants of snow density include temperature, the number of contaminants that might be in the snow or impurities, the depth, the density, hardness, strength, grain shape, grain size, liquid water content, of course, and then the albedo, which has to do with the reflection of solar energy off the snowpack. And why is snow important in Nevada? Snow is important in Nevada because of, again, the orographic effect that causes snowstorms to leave so much snow on the ridgetops in Nevada, which creates the water supplies that are used in the valleys for everything from irrigation for agriculture to municipal water supply to even the water that we use to water our lawns uh, in the summertime in the metropolitan areas of the state.